Good day, everybody. My, how the, how the world has changed in relation to how we produce, manufacture, and sell a product, and how it's devastated many in the working public. What is that? It's globalization. And what has been the greatest prompter of globalization? It's been technology. The creation, the speed of which technology has revolutionized our workplace. So how does that work? Why is it so devastating for the future generation, even much more than it is for the current generation? Well, first, the most important attribute anybody can ever have is innovation, creativity, the ability to think differently. Do differently, of course, but the ability to think differently, to think differently than anybody else. That's why when you look at the richest in our world, they've developed something that somebody else hasn't. And they developed the idea. They may not have worked to develop that project or that idea, but they have that idea. And that's what we pay for. We pay millions, if not billions, for an idea. There's many other people that can bring that idea to the forefront, but it's that idea that starts that trend. And in reality, there's few people that have that kind of idea, that have that kind of mind, that can think in a different manner than anybody else has thought. It's really a revolutionary aspect. And those that have that ability, who just don't look at the way things are, but look at the way things can be, those are the ones that really are the changing nature of our world. They're the ones that we follow. And so we pay them to tell us where we should go. They develop that product or service that allows us to do that. That's where the money is today. What's happened with technology, and subsequently with globalization, is once that idea is created, you figure out that you can manufacture that idea just about anywhere in the world. And by anywhere we mean where there's lower wages, lower knowledges, lower skills, lower abilities. Whenever we can find people who will work for less, People will work for less when they have a lower standard of living. And so once we have this idea, whether it's a new iPhone or it's any other aspect that's going to improve our lives, some gadget on a car, then we're going to go to a place where we can build a manufacturing plant, a manufacturing plant that's going to be staffed largely by robots and machinery. But we just need some people to make sure that it's working. If it's not working, to raise it to somebody who can fix it. We don't need the manufacturing plants and chains where you had hundreds if not thousands of workers. Actually, we need fewer workers in those plants. There's places that are producing billions of water bottles in a month, and they only need just a few people, a few dozen, to run that plant. It's an amazing circumstance. That's because the person who had the idea of how to produce that product can then develop that plant and that line, that assembly line, to do it. And they just need a few people to run it. A few people to make sure that the machine works well. Machines have been popularized and they have been produced in a way that the error rate is minimal, almost insignificant. And for that reason, what we see is, again, those people who come up with the idea are the ones that are going to advance their career. Those people that have to manufacture the idea, the people who are going to have to take that idea and make it work, are not going to be paid much money. And we're going to find those employees throughout the world, those who will work for the least amount of money possible. That's why so many people in the United States and other advanced countries are finding it difficult to find work. There's others that will do it cheaper. And that brings us to the beginning of our discussion, which is where you design something in one country, you produce it in another, and then you sell it throughout the world. If you're an employee, you have to learn how to be that person that can design and create something different. People will pay you for it. People will pay you handsomely for that, often for the rest of your life, to think and be different. Sadly, so much of our world doesn't teach somebody to be different. We want to be the same as everybody else. And that's not what the marketplace is rewarding in today's world. That's not what we as customers are demanding when we go to a store. We want something that is new, innovative, the latest and greatest, that makes our lives 
even better. And if we can find that, we're going to buy it. If we can create that as a person, we'll have lifelong employment. That is the future of our world. The future of our world is the ability to think of something in a different manner, to relay that to an audience and say, you must have it. And once they demand it, then find somebody to produce it. Thanks, everybody. Good luck in an often changing and challenging world.